Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It contains 174 data sufficiency questions. We have, we have already done every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the solutions, the original solutions to any, any one of these problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the middle of redoing the problems and we are on page number 171. Please turn to it. Page number 171, problem number 171. 43, problem number 143 is on page number 172, not 71. Page 172. Here is what the problem says. It says, which, which is the proper, which is the proper expression, which is the proper expression for the shaded portion of the number line. And they show you a number line where part of the number line has been shaded. And this is what it looks like. Here is our number line, here is our zero, here is our zero and it goes from negative 5 to positive 3 from a negative 5 to a positive 3 and that's our number line here and the portion that is shaded is this portion right here that is showing here and there are a whole bunch of inequalities that are given to us and our job is to uh, pick one, uh, one answer choice, one inequality that corresponds to the shaded portion that is given to here which lies between negative 5 and positive 3 let's take a, let's take a look at the very first one the very first one says absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3 well absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3 what does it mean? what does it mean when we say that the absolute value of x is, is, is less than or equal to 3 can, can x be, ask yourself, can x be negative 5? is it possible for x to be negative 5? well let's find out, shall we? if you take the absolute value of negative 5, if you take the absolute value of x and if x equals negative 5 then the absolute value of negative 5 is of course positive 5 and is positive 5 less than or equal to 3? The answer of course is not. Positive 5, 5 is not less than 3. Which means that x cannot be negative 5. Can x be negative 4? Can x be negative 4? 4 is not less than or equal to 3. Which means that the value of the x, whatever the value of the x is, cannot lie below negative 3. It cannot go below negative 3. Here is our 0. Here is our negative 3. It cannot be negative 4, because as we just saw, absolute value of negative 4 is going to be positive 4, and positive 4 is not less than or equal to 3. It has to be less than or equal to 3. It cannot go below negative 3. Similarly, similarly, the value of the x here cannot be more than positive 3. Here is our positive 3. x cannot be, x cannot be uh, 4 again, because if x is, x is equal to 4, absolute value of 4 is 4. Same exact argument as before. X cannot be 7 because the absolute value of 7 would be 7 and 7 is not less than 3. So what this tells us is that, what this tells us is that, what, what is presented to us here, absolute value of X is less than or equal to negative, absolute value of X is less than or equal to 3, that tells us that X value of the X has to lie between negative 3 and positive 3. It can be equal to positive 3 or negative 3 because it's equal sign there. It lies between negative 3 and positive 3. But that's not what is shown here. What is shown here is, it's from negative 5 to positive 3, not negative 3. What is shown here is negative 5. This, this does not correspond to that. The answer choice is not A. Let's look at B. B, instead of 5, let's take, a, let's take a look at it. Answer is not A. In B, answer is not A. In B, what we have is absolute value of X is less than or equal to 5. So now, it's going to go from negative 5 to a positive 5. Any value that lies any value that lies in this range from negative 5 to positive 5 would do the job. It lies in this range all the way to positive 5. It is possible for x to be uh, x to be uh, positive 4 or positive 5 because absolute value of positive 5 is going to be 5 which is less than or equal to 5. x cannot be 6 because the absolute value of 6 absolute value of 6 is going to be 6 which is not less than or equal to 5. It, can, it cannot be negative 6. It cannot be negative 6. So it cannot go below negative 5. It cannot go above positive 5. It's going to lie between negative 5 and the positive 5 in answer choice B. But again, the problem here is just the reverse. This end is okay, negative 5 and negative 5. 
but it's supposed to stop at positive 3, this one goes up to positive 5. Here we have just a reverse, a reverse problem. This one, this one is stopped at positive 5, but it, it only went up to negative, negative 3, this is supposed to go up to negative 5. Answer choice B is also not the answer because it goes from negative 5 to all the way to positive 5, it's supposed to stop at positive 3. Answer is not B. Take a look at C. Answer choice C. Answer choice C is where things begin to get a little bit prickly. Now what I want you to pretend is, look, what I want you to pretend is that this is Y. And if that's what the case, we already saw, if something like this is given to us, absolute value of Y is less than or equal to 3, so just like this one, just like this one, what that means is that, that Y, whatever that is, that Y has to lie between negative 3 and a positive 3. We just saw that. It's the exact same thing. But instead of Y, we have an expression there. Y, pretend that uh, the Y equals X minus 2 x minus 2. But the exact same situation, whatever quantity that you see in the absolute sign, that quantity, whatever, whatever quantity we see in the absolute sign, that quantity has to lie between negative 3 and a positive 3. So that tells us that x minus 2 has to be greater than negative 3, greater than or equal to negative 3, or it has to be less than or equal to positive 3. That's what c tells us. But that's not enough. We have to find out, we are interested in x. This what, what is shown here is the value of x. So we have to solve for x. We have to get rid of this negative 2 from here. How do we get rid of the negative 2? Well, just like what we do in the equation. Whatever you do in, in, in inequality is the exact same thing as what you will do in, in equality. With, the, with, the, with a couple of minor exceptions. Well, I shouldn't say minor. With, with a couple of very serious exceptions. Which is why I made a note here of the videos that I would like you to watch. I'll, be, I'll mention them in a second here. But anyway, for the time being, we have to get rid of this negative 2. What do we do? We simply add 2 to all three sides of the inequality. Add 2 to all three sides. Now we have a negative 2 and a positive 2. They're going to kill each other. Here we end up with a negative 3 and a positive 2. Negative 3 and a positive 2 is negative 1, which has to be less than or equal to x. Here we left with only x, which has to be less than or equal, which has to, which has to be less than or equal to 3 and a 5. 3 and a 2 is 5. So what C shows us, what C shows us is the value of x that lies between negative 1 and a positive 5. Between negative 1 and a positive 5. But that is not what is shown here in the original problem. Not at all. It's, it's not, it has no resemblance whatsoever. It's supposed to lie between negative 5 and a positive 3, not negative 1 and a positive 5. C is also not the answer. Let's look at answer choice D. Let's look at answer choice D. In answer choice D, we are told, in answer choice D, we are told that the absolute value of x minus 1 has to be less than or equal to 4. Which means this, this, this amount that we see there, this quantity that we see there in the absolute value sign has to lie between negative 4 and a positive 4. x minus 1 has to lie between negative 4 and a positive 4. For the same exact logic, for the same exact logic that we explained here. Again, we are interested in x, we are not interested in x minus 1. We have to separate, we have to, we have to isolate the x by itself. How are we going to do that? We see a negative 1, how do we get rid of negative 1? Well, just by adding positive 1 to it. But if you're going to add 1 to here, we have to add 1 here and 1 here. Otherwise the inequality, otherwise the inequality will not remain valid. It will, it will no longer be the same inequality. That's it. A negative 1 and positive 1 is going to drop out. Here we end up with a negative 4 and a positive 3, which is negative 3. And of course we can stop right here. Had, had it been a real exam, we can stop right here. It doesn't match. It's supposed to start with negative 5. It doesn't match. That's the root equal to x. And this is positive 5 which also does not match. But even if it did match, even if the one of the end did match, the both ends have to match. D is not the answer. Let's look at answer choice E. Where can we do answer choice E? There's two answer choice E at the bottom. Answer choice E, it says x plus 1. Well, answer choice E is actually, answer uh, there's two answer choice E right here. It's just x plus 1. And answer choice E is the exact same thing, except we have x plus 1. And we have x plus 1. This is answer choice E. So watch what happens now. So instead of, instead of a negative 1, we have a positive 1 here. Instead of negative 1, we have a positive 1. Which means if you want to get rid of it, we need to subtract 1, not add 1. We need to subtract 1. This is still negative 4, same as before. And now, now what are we going to get? Let's find out, shall we? Negative 4 and a negative 1, because we see we want to get rid of this positive 1 with a negative 1. So we end up with just the x. And a negative 4 and a positive negative 1 is going to give us negative 5, which is actually a good sign, because it matches this end. 
And here we're going to get a positive 4 and a negative 1. Positive 4 and negative 1 is going to give us positive 3, which matches that end. Voila, we found it. The winner is E. The winner is E. Now listen, before I wrap up the video, I'm, I'm not going to do any other problem in this, in this particular video. For one particular reason, because the, this, this concept deals with, this problem deals with the concept which a lot of people have trouble with, which is the absolute value inequality. These are called, these are called absolute values inequality. As it is, people have trouble with the, people have trouble with the uh, with the inequality concept. People have sometimes trouble with inequality problems, but when you introduce the absolute value in the in, in, in the inequality. It makes it even more complicated sometimes. As you can see, it's not actually that complicated. It's actually quite straightforward. It's very logical. You have to go systematically, logically, don't go all over the place. Now, if you happen to be one of those people who is actually weak, if you feel that you are not uh, quite as sure of yourself as you would like to be, if you would like to have a sound foundation of the concept, well, that requires practice. And what I'm going to, what I'm going to give you right now for homework are 10 problems, 10 videos I would like you to watch. Now, listen very carefully. When you're watching these videos, if you decide to watch those videos, and not just these videos, any video, when I set up the problem, when I set up the problem on the blackboard, pause the video immediately. Solve the problem yourself and then match your work that you do yourself with the work that you and I do together later on. You will find that you will get a hell of a lot more out of it. Uh, your learning experience will be far more rewarding. Even if you happen to get it wrong, you will learn more if you do it yourself first. These are the videos I would like you to watch. Now, the fact that the the fact that they deal with different exam, it doesn't matter. Math is math, you understand? This exam is called T's. T E A S. T E A S. I made a mess of it, didn't I? T E A T as in tea as you what you drink, tea and coffee, T's. T's. T E A S T's. Just type in T's math, just like you have GMAT math, just like that. Exact. All the series are the same, uh, are, are designed in the same manner. Just type in T's math and watch these four videos. Day, day 57, 58, 59, and 60. These four problems deal with the concept of absolute value inequality. In addition to that, I would like you to watch six more videos if you have the time and if you have the motivation. Just type in revise GRE math, just like you would type in GMAT math. Here you would type in, don't type in GRE math. GRE math will take you to my old series dealing with the old exam, old GRE. You must type in revised GRE, revised GRE math, and then type in day 316, 317, day 104, 106, 59, and 60. Watch those six videos, do the problems with me, and by the end of the 10 videos, you will see that your fear of inequality and your fear of dealing with absolute value problem will be gone forever. Do you understand? I know it's a very bold claim, but uh, I hope that... Uh, that uh, that is what turns out to be true. Do you understand? I'll see you later. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, we'll continue with the problems on this page. But this video, I just wanted to devote to nothing but absolute value inequality. Okay? Bye now.